there is. So we've got a bottle here with measurements, but we'll also weigh it as well. I'll get my stopwatch ready, and we're going to do how much it flows in one minute. So here we go. Stopwatch has started. Let's see what we get. Okay. So that's it. Sixty seconds of fuel. Okay, we're going to do another test now to see for, to see what restriction we've got on our fuel cap. So we took the fuel cap off, and we're going to do the same test again with no fuel cap on to see if there's any difference between the flow. So, ready, steady, go. Why the hell did I trust in love? When nothing changes to the day I die. And it's you. We got 800. So we got 800 milliliters with the fuel cap removed. So that means this fuel cap is creating a restriction. So we're going to look for another one and see if we can improve on things. Right, this is the old fuel cap that we've just removed. As you can see, it's got the tabs on the inside, they're sort of flattened over. The whole thing's been squashed. It's in pretty bad condition. So we've got brand new fuel cap here. It's got the holes clear. And we'll see if it makes a difference on the fuel flow. Right, we'll do our last test now with the new fuel cap on and see if we've improved things. So we're ready to start now. So it's just shy of 
the A100, but it's much better than the other one. So it's flowing about 80 millilitres more over the minute. So we're going to go with the new cap, that's going to improve things. Right, what we need to do, we really need to go back to basics and explain what a carburetor does. So people can understand through the series of videos that we'll do about carburation uh, exactly what they're looking at. What, so they understand, you know, how a carburetor works. So basically what a carburetor does is meter the air and fuel into the engine. Now this fuel needs to be broken up into small particles to make it so it will combust correctly. Now, that's what the carburetor does. It mixes the fuel and air into small, carb into small particles and that's then fed into the engine and those particles can explode and ignite. If there's too many particles of fuel and not enough air, it will be very rich. If there's too minimal, minimal amount of particles of fuel and way too much air, it's going to be too weak. So that is basically how it's going to work. So your slide, which goes up and down, meters the volume of air that's going to go in. But as the slide goes up, there is a tapered needle the needle that goes up and down regulates the amount of fuel that's being supplied. But during that fuel being drawn up and um, the fuel, how, how is the fuel drawn up? Ooh, is it through a straw or something? The fuel is drawn up out of the float bowl by a differential in pressure. Have we got a differential in pressure? Airspeed. Increased flow lowers air pressure. So we have normal air pressure in the float bowl and a lower pressure above it as the air flow speeds up. And then to equalize that, the fuel is forced up through the atomizer and into the, uh, into the flow of air. Because you've got a lower pressure above it and a higher pressure below, the higher pressure then pushes the fuel up. It's as simple as that. So, there was a gentleman called Bernoulli who discovered that if you squeeze air through a larger tube down into a smaller tube, therefore having a venturi on the front squashes the mass of air down into the carburetor, it increases velocity. But when you increase velocity, you reduce pressure. And therefore, that's what sucks fuel up, out of the float bowl and up into the airstream. Bernoulli. Same principle as the wing of a plane, whereas the air has to flow faster over the top and it's slower underneath. So therefore, where the air has to speed up, it reduces pressure and you create lift. Magic in it, science. Right, we'll continue with this now, talking about fuel supply. So we've we've looked at um, and from the tank to the carburetor. So we need to have supposedly about a pint a minute of fuel. So we've got, uh, which is about 500 millilitres. So we're on 800 millilitres on this engine with a fast flow tap. So it should be more than enough. But then the other restriction is on the carb, where the fuel comes in to the carb here. Let's zoom in a little bit. Right, the fuel comes in through here and in the bottom here then it goes this direction across 
and comes out through the needle seating. That is then regulated by this, the needle that goes in there. This needle opens and closes a small valve, that, that valve, it works as a valve. You've got two holes either side here to let extra fuel out. You've also got slots down the side of the needle to allow fuel flow down the sides of the needle as well. Certain things, well, we might as well just comment on this now. This is a spring-loaded needle. That's very useful for engines with high vibration because what can also create problems is if your needle is bouncing in the seating the carburetor will overfuel and you'll get overfueling so this acts as a damper a dampener when the float is in position this is your float valve your float has the needle on thusly and it fits in the carburetor like this with a small pin that holds it in position there so the float opens and closes with the amount of fuel when the fuel float bowl fills up the float goes up and closes the valve if your fuel level is low, the flow opens and allows more fuel in. So this float regulates the level of fuel you have in the carburetor. The carburetor should always have a constant level of fuel at all times. It shouldn't drop low or it shouldn't go high. If the fuel raises up too high, you get too much fuel in, the carburetor will overfuel and it will be too rich and flood. If, if it's allowed to go too low you will get fuel starvation and worse still if the pilot jet drops out of the fuel supply you will get massive amount of starvation on the low end and possible heat seizure. So it's very very important to have enough fuel flow in through that needle to constantly maintain the correct amount of fuel. So that's why the float has to be at an optimal level. Right, to set the float height on the PWK car, we will need, firstly, set the carburetor at 60 degrees. So, just change that slightly. It. So with our car leaning at 60 degrees, there's less load on the float because of the weight of the float. Now from the very bottom of the float to the face of the car here, it should measure then 20 millimeters. If you need to adjust the float height, that's on 20, so we can just Tweak the little metal tab slightly, recheck again. There we go. Bang on. And that'll do nicely. Come on. So that's now set on 20 mil. So that gives us the correct amount of fuel in the carburetor at all times. Right, so I've just basically took this uh, carb off an old bike, so uh, the float height's completely wrong. So whoever had it first didn't set the float height correctly. So we'll, re we'll recheck it again. PH, BL. 24.5 is the maximum and this is on 
26 millimeters. So the float needs to go up slightly. So we're just going to have to tweak that and reset it. Right, we've given the, the metal strip a little bit of a tweak and now we're going to remeasure again to see where we are. And now we're on 24.5. So that's the upper limit, 24.5. So now it's correct. So now the flow height's correct on this Del Auto, and that is now going to fill the carb to the correct level before it switches off. So another thing is, you probably wondered why carburetors are rubber mounted, and the rubber mounting is to stop heat getting to the carb from the engine, and therefore it insulates the carburetor from the heat of the engine, and it also cuts down on high frequency vibrations. High frequency vibrations can froth the fuel up in the carb and cause fuel frothing. And once it does that, you get fuel frothing, it all gets lots of air bubbles in there and you will get a massively weak mixture because you're getting no fuel being sucked up, you're just getting loads of air pockets. So it's really, really important to have it rubber mounted. That's what the rubber mount does. Insulates the carb from heat insulates it from high frequency vibrations. The last thing you want is fuel frothing because that will just give you a bogging down and the engine just won't simply won't respond properly with a lack of fuel. So come to the fuel supply that's needed for a stoic uh, engine for it to be running stoic which means the perfect mixture is between one part petrol and 14 parts air and one part petrol and 15 parts air about 14.7 but uh, between 14 and 15 is about right you don't want it too rich you don't want it too weak if you can get it round about there that's uh, stoometric uh, volume of fuel and air mixture and that gives you perfect carburation so you want to maintain that all the way through from the low end all the way up the full throttle and getting that is very very complicated and future uh, issues we'll be looking at needles and atomizers closely and pilot jets and slides and what everything the difference it all makes there is a massive amount of choice on needles for Del Auto and parts it's just crazy whereas yeah, cans seem to be far simpler. Just with with like five needles, you've basically got uh, enough to do the job. Whereas Del Auto seem to have a million a million needles. I don't know why, but I will post that to you on one of the pages. It's all in this book. There's a load in this book about Del Autos you can look at. Gives you all the information on uh, carburetors. Still doesn't tell you how to jet it. But it tells you how it works. Two yellow monsters there, mate. Look at that. Yellow, not orange. <laughs> <laughs> See, to me, that's orange. It's yellow. Well, it's orange. It's a slightly orange. different yellow to your yellow. If I ask you, just give us a quick breakdown of what it is. It's a Super Monza, yeah, yeah, 230cc, well, well, ported. Alright, so, let's speak, what exactly are we looking at here? Well, we're looking at a, straight from Tino Sachi. Super, with, Super Monza. Oh, sorry, Super Monza, <laughs> 230cc. All the ports have been done, casings have been done, and all that of uh, respect given to me by uh, well, go, Taylor Sturgeage.
what you think of that then, Dennis? Yeah. <laughs> don't know what to say, so it's, it's just fucking mental. It's really mental. The Casa I thought was good, but this is more motocrossy, a um, bit scary. <laughs> Actually, it's been like, no, shit. Mate, yeah. this is honestly, yeah. unbelievable. I can't say nothing. It's unbelievable. Honestly, absolutely mental. Brilliant. Thanks a lot, mate. That is, honestly, it's far beyond what I thought it was going to be. Honestly. And it sounds so cool. It's Chris Bazell in it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. unbelievable. It is, honestly, please. Proper, proper, That's going to take a bit of getting used to riding. Yeah. That is. No.